So today we will have a clinical discussion on parotid swelling. Actually it is a short case for you in the exams for both MS, DNB and even for MBBS students. So today we will have a clinical discussion okay how to go about in management of a parotid swelling. Okay. okay. So, do you have any case scenario? Oh, yes, sir. We have a parotid swelling case scenario. Sir. Okay. You can go ahead. Okay. So, a 13 year, year old female housewife presented with swelling in front and below the right ear lobule for past 10 years. A history of presentation. So, 10 years duration, what does it indicate like? Uh, it indicates a benign swelling. More so, like what is the this, most sir? common benign swelling in parotid? Uh, pleomorphic adenoma, sir. Pleomorphic adenoma. So, that's important, right? The yes, most sir. common parotid tumor is? A pleomorphic adenoma and the prolonged duration again indicates it's a benign swelling. swelling. Yes. Okay, right. History of present illness. Patient was apparently asymptomatic since 10 years until she herself noticed a small swelling in front of the right ear lobule, uh, which was insidious in onset, gradually progressed to attain the present size and to involve in front and below the right ear lobules. No complaint of associated pain over the swelling or pain while chewing food. No history of sudden increase in size of the swelling. No history of fever or purulent discharge in the mouth or evening rise of temperature. Fine. Why did you ask about pain, ma? Uh, any involvement of perineural, if, if it is. No, actually, no. It, actually, 10 years old swelling. Yes, sir. Okay. But you have asked about pain or the swelling and yes, pain sir. while chewing food. So, it can be due to sialadenitis. Okay. okay sir. Chronic sialadenitis. Okay. okay sir. So, again, it is infective. Right, and sialadenitis is inflammation and infection of salivary okay. glands. Okay, so that can happen. So, in that case, only when they take food, there can be the exacerbation okay. of this uh, pain and swelling also becomes more. Okay, so okay. you should ask that. But uh, in uh, which salivary gland it is common? Uh, submandibular. It is common in submandibular salivary gland. Why it is common in submandibular salivary gland? Sialadenitis. Uh, because of the duct uh, against the gravity. So, there are two reasons. One, yes, the secretions of the submandibular gland is mucoid. Number one, the duct, the Wharton's duct is against the gravity. Yes. And being the floor of the mouth, the food particles and other things can get settled there and can it can initiate infections. Yes, okay. Sir. So, you have to, to rule out that, you have to ask about pain. Number two, pain can be also when there is a malignant transformation and involvement of adjacent structures. Yes. Okay. So, that is the reason why you should ask about pain. So, again, why did you ask about sudden increase in the size of a swelling? Uh, pleomorphic adenomas can have a tendency to turn into a malignancy. So, there uh, can be a malignant mal transformation. What malignancy do you get in pleomorphic uh, adenomas? Carcinoma ex pleomorphic adenomas. Adenocarcinoma can occur Carcinoma. in this thing. So, that is why you asked about sudden increase in size, size of, of the, the swelling. swelling. Yes. Okay, right. Then why did you ask about purulent discharge and other things? Uh, any uh, inflammatory conditions? Any so, but you don't expect inflammatory conditions to yeah, be there for 10 years. Yes, sir. But still, as a routine, you can ask about, okay, purulent discharge in the whole cat and things. Okay, go ahead, ma. And another important reason is, see, we don't know, like, still, it looks like parroted only. Yes, sir. When you the way you present it, but still it can be a lymph node also. Mm. But lymph node again, 10 years we don't anticipate any pathology of a lymph node yes, sir. to be there for longer years. Okay, another thing is probably a benign swelling, right? It may be a lipoma, how do you know, right? Mm. Yes, sir. So, lipoma also can present there, okay. Mm. Wherever there is adipose tissue, yes. can get lipomas, okay. Yes, so, sir. you can ask no other similar swellings elsewhere in the body. Okay. Okay, lipoma also is a benign condition occurring in adipose tissue. Yes. So, it can also occur in the same region, right? So, you can ask, do you have any similar swellings elsewhere in the body as well? Okay, okay sir. Right. Uh, no history of asymmetry of the face, difficulty in closing eyes, difficulty in chewing food, drooling of saliva from the angle of mouth, no mm. history of difficulty in opening the mouth, no history of difficulty in swallowing, no history of dryness of eyes, mouth or joint pain, no history of earache or discharge, no history of any other swelling on the contralateral side of the face or neck or elsewhere. No history of loss of weight or appetite. No history of breathlessness or bone pain. So, you reason out everything, right? Yes. Why did you ask about the first history of asymmetry, difficulty in closing? Any uh, facial nerve involvement. So, if you suspect a malignant tumor of parotid, okay, likely involvement of facial nerve is there. And what type of facial nerve involvement it is? 
element type chromotor okay. neuron type of facial palsy yes, so sir. all these things can happen so that's why you are asking the history itself right yes sir. and uh, why difficulty of opening of the mouth any uh, trismus uh, uh, any what are the causes of trismus any temporomandibular joint involvement TM, uh, tm joint involvement uh, and uh, even masseter, masseter. Uh, uh, both see the tumor involving the masseter as well as tm joint can Uh, cause difficulty in opening of the mouth, yes. so you should ask about why difficulty of swallowing. Uh, because of the deep lobe involvement. Yeah, deep lobe, right? Yes. Deep lobe can cause difficulty in swallowing. Okay, why about dryness, mouth, I mean. Uh, Jogren syndrome. Jogren syndrome. Okay, Jogren syndrome again, like it, it they have pain also, yes, right? Sir. So they have pain with dryness of mouth, and then mostly it's bilateral uh, sialo magali. Yes, so bilateral parotid swelling, but still for completion we have asked it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Why about uh, air discharge? Uh, if any case of infective etiology near, it could cause a preauricular lymph node. Lymph node again, yeah, you thought so, but again ten years, ten years you don't expect. Okay, yes, but still, if it is a shorter duration, you have to rule out a preauricular lymph node. So yes. any pathology, any infective etiology in external auditory canal can cause preauricular lymph node enlargement okay good past history uh, no history of diabetes uh, cld tuberculosis connective tissue disorders or any other comorbidities so no. as far as possible don't use abbreviations in your exams okay sir okay so what do you mean by cld a chronic liver disease chronic uh, liver, liver disease. disease that's yes. what see how is it will, uh, will okay fine how is it related to parotid Uh, like any connective tissue disorder. No, no, no. Uh, Actually, uh, cyanomegalies do occur in alcoholics. Okay? okay. So in that case, if they are alcoholic, you can have cyanomegaly. Okay. The reason being, they can get parotitis. Okay. Okay, sir. Now that's what uh, what I mean is uh, chronic cyanomegalies can happen in alcoholics. Okay. So that may be the reason. So don't use abbreviations. Okay. Uh, Tuberculosis, of course, to rule out a lymph node right. pathology and other things. And it's a short case. Now you have to be. Relevant to it, okay. Okay. Right. Mm, let's see. Is there sterilization? No, it's not relevant. It doesn't matter. Sir. Not okay, relevant, sir. okay. Okay, sir. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Menstrual history. Men are kept thirteen years. Regular four by thirty day cycle to normal. Again, in short case, not, not anything relevant. You tell me. Okay. okay Otherwise, sir. you need not tell. Okay. okay. 